Welcome back to the full story series right here at Comic Storian. This is your home for narrated comic books brought to you by me, Benny, your narrator. Today we're going to be bringing you all three parts of our Flash Forward series that came out over the span of about four weeks. This series is six issues and follows Heroes in Crisis, giving us the story of what happened to Wally West. So basically he came back in Rebirth, went into Heroes in Crisis, and then he went into this story, redeeming himself from killing everyone around him. That's right, he killed a bunch of people, so our story is going to open up with him in prison. Hope you guys enjoy. Throughout the great cosmos, there have been beings tasked with watching and preventing calamities from spilling from one universe to the next. The cosmic being known as Tempest Fugonaut sees something in the void, a darkness, one that threatens all creation as we know it. This darkness is something that he has never seen before, something no one has ever dared to imagine. For every good thought in existence, there is a dark and twisted opposite. In those final moments, a dark universe is created, and this dark multiverse is forever destined to decay. Its vile toxicity is bleeding outward onto the main 52 known DC universes. Tempest Fugonaut remains steadfast in defending the darkness all his own. But may all that ever was, or all that ever will be, have mercy on his soul for what he is about to do. The multiverse needs a hero, even if this hero might be the last person that anyone would ever expect. And in a dark cell in the Blackgate Supermax prison, Wally West lays in his bed. He lays there wearing a suppression collar, not as punishment, but for the safety of others. Wally West lost control of his powers and accidentally killed his best friend and many others. And right now he is staring at the ceiling, unable to sleep. It's not even a possibility in dreams, well, he doesn't deserve them. Peace, forgiveness, redemption after everything that he's done. All he deserves are the memories of this nightmare that he's made for himself. A guard bangs on the cell bars telling him that it's time to eat. Hero. Wally gets up leaving his cell scoffing telling himself, right, hero. They had to put him somewhere before his trial and the only place that could contain him would be this place. Everyone here hates him though. Either he put his fellow inmates in here or he knows someone who did. With that, everyone is trying to make a name for themselves, like Double Down. And Wally welcomes it. It's what he deserves. Why should he be able to walk this earth when others that he killed with his own hands can't? But no, it's never that easy. And Murmur makes sure of that. Murmur doesn't protect Wally out of compassion. He did it so that Wally would live. So that he would suffer as long as possible with his guilt. And he does. Day or night, they are there. The memories. The framing of innocent people for his own mistakes. His time in Sanctuary was supposed to help him heal, but instead it broke him down. He was ready to put his money where his mouth was, killing a future version of himself to establish an alibi. How crazy was he that all of that made sense at the time? He tried to close his eyes and all he could see is them. Not just his past friends, but Gerder trying to kill him in his sleep. He quickly rolls out of his bed to avoid Gerder's attack, only to be picked up by Tar Pit. The two take turns beating into Wally, punching him, kicking him, slamming his head into the ground. But what they didn't take into account was accidentally breaking Wally's suppression collar. In less than a second, the two bad guys are taken care of. However, maybe he should just give up. This could be it. And that's when a portal opens up and Tempest Fugonaut steps through, telling Wally that he cannot give up. There is still some fight left in him. Wally asks, who is he? And Tempest tells him his name and tells him that he has risked much just coming here. My body grows weak. We must go. There is much work the fastest man alive needs to do. As the two men are pulled into the portal, Wally looks around asking, where is he? What is this place? Why do they need him? Tempest explains that the orbs around them are pouring in from a dark world that refuses to die. The darkness is seeping into other universes and corroding them, and if they do nothing, all will be lost. Wally says, yeah, sorry, not interested. Even if I had the skill set to travel between universes, and I don't, I tried the hero thing and a lot of people are dead because of it. Tempest laughs, telling him that he only glimpsed into the power that he wields. Ever since, he has become unmoored. Wally asks what does he mean by that and Tempest tells him that there are no time for words. I was not asking for help. It is your destiny to serve the cosmos, Wally West. Tempest releases a blast from his cosmic staff into Wally, and before he even has a chance to react, Wally sees himself back in his uniform. Wally begins to yell, no, 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 these clothes are everything I used to be, I can't wear this. 
and the light begins to shine and Tempest tells him, All will be made clear. Good journey, Wally West. Wally spins back to run towards Tempest, but as he does, a portal opens and Wally shoots straight through. On the other side, he stops just before a beaten Superman and he asks, Who are you? What is happening? A Superman coughs, telling him, <coughs> My name is President Superman. I cannot fall. As Superman collapses, Wally hurries over catching him and Superman says, You should not be here. Wally tells him that he certainly agrees with that, um, Mr. President Superman. Uh, why are we in the White House and why is everything destroyed? Superman says, I can't protect you from... But just then a black fleshy creature bursts through the walls roaring. And Wally shouts, Right! That! We should get away from that! Wait, what's the glowing stick? Maybe it was a gift from a certain someone? So Wally holds out the rod that he was holding and it emits a blast that rips the creature apart. But before he could even guess what happened, this world's Justice League of America's Batman tells him that if he attacks one of them, you must face us all. Superman tells him to stand down. This man is an ally. And right now, there's no time to point fingers. You need to tell me what happened before it's too late. Earlier, while flying home on a self-piloted bird plane one, he was ambushed by an unidentified threat. Below in the Grand Canyon, he found the assailants, creatures of a fierce and incredible corrosive power, a thick, dark energy that even now he struggles to explain. Their savagery was unspeakable, and their very touch felt like the death of worlds. Once he got back to the Oval Office of Solitude, he learned that this dark energy comes from an alternate universe. After running a simulation, he found that if they don't stop these demon creatures, they will take over the Earth within the hour. What's more, Congress has authorized the launch of the anti-life bomb. If they can't fight past the dark matter and stop the bomb within the next 15 minutes at the Grand Canyon, millions will die in the blast radius. Wally blasts President Superman with the cosmic rod, telling him, At ease. I'll stop this. He begins to run, yelling to Tempest that he really could use a few more details here, and a projection of Tempest Fugonaut appears telling him that his mission is to seal the darkness with the staff, but right now, you are too late. The anti-life bomb or the dark matter eating this world, whatever you do, millions will die regardless. You need to move on to the next world. This one is a lost cause, West. Wally leaps off the cliff telling him, well that's not gonna happen, I'm here and I'm gonna stop this. As he lands, he's confronted by the retaliators but they're not happy about his presence. Wally calls out to them asking if there isn't any way that they would just trust that he is a good guy and let him deal with the dark matter that they're standing on. And he's got a staff, it's like a whole thing. American Crusader tells him, there is a great darkness falling on our world. It trails led us here. We do not have the luxury of trust at this moment. Wally charges through the American Crusader, but before he can get far, he's struck by lightning from Thunder Rider and Wind Rider. He falls to the ground asking, really? Too bad that lightning strike just supercharged me so I can give it back 10 times harder. He throws the lightning back, knocking the two out of the air, and the giant blue behemoth stomps through, shouting, Behemoth Bash! Wally jumps over the swinging arm, telling him, I just want to do this! Light shoots out of the cosmic staff and into the black goop, and it spirals in a frenzy. Thunder Rider tells everyone that he's received a signal from their home world. Their Earth is beginning to heal itself. Wally then asks, Wait, you're not from this world? Whatever the case, this portal that's opening isn't going to stay open forever. If you're thinking that this is an opportunity to get back home, then this is it. As the retaliators all run into the portal, Wally tells himself that he needs to think. He has six seconds until the anti-life bomb lands. That isn't a lot of time, even for him. Just then, a fully healed President Superman flies down, holding the bomb, asking, Were you looking for this? Wally yells, Actually, yeah! Glad to see the staff purged you of your dark energy. Superman lands, telling him, I want to thank you for all that you've done. You really are a symbol of hope. Wally sighs, telling him that he really wishes people would stop telling him that. He's just glad that everyone's okay, but he has to go. President Superman then asks, What can we do to help you? Anything at all. But before he could finish, Wally takes off into a portal, leaving the world behind. Elsewhere in the cosmos, Tempest Fugonaut watches, telling him that that was nicely done. Soon he will learn the real reason why he was chosen, but he's not ready yet. More worlds are on the brink of disaster. But meanwhile, on the dark world that won't die, Statues of the Fallen are constructed. Narc, Commander Steel, Arsenal, Lagoon Boy, and so on. A hand reaches out to touch the statues, stating that they weren't here yesterday. Are they statues or gravestones? Iris West tells her twin brother Jai that it'll be okay. Promise. And Jai says that he's scared. Remember when Daddy made that very same promise?
over in the Gotham of Earth-42. Hundreds of people plummet into a glowing unknown as the ground splits apart. Wally begins to run through the broken city, catching these people asking, what the hell is going on? But before Wally could get an answer, he hears something in the distance whistling as it gets closer. It's at that moment that there's a loud explosion as a giant cruise ship crashes its way through the streets towards the people. Wally begins to relocate the people again and a man asks if he can save us from them. Wally tells him okay, but he's gonna need some information here before he makes any promises. He needs to know who them is. Before anyone could answer, a deep voice from behind him says, I am one of the aforementioned them, otherwise known as the Justice League of Vampires. Wally looks back to see a vampiric Superman float down and he asks, how is this a thing? Why aren't you helping the people falling to the streets? Superman tells him, because my people need to feed. Wally sighs. Oh, this is gonna get real old. The last Superman I met was the President of the United States. I liked him a whole lot better than you. Wally runs in jumping and punching the vampire Superman over and over until he flies back into a wooden storage crate. Wally then comes up with a great idea. He certainly can't kill Superman, but he can certainly trap him with a bunch of wooden sticks. Just as Wally begins to finish up at super speed, the vampire Flash of this world runs up shouting, Soon, the entire world will know the shadows belong to us. Wally asks if it's the real Barry, and the Flash tells him, I was Barry Allen in a past life. The two speedsters zoom through the city trying to fight one another, but the more they run, the more Wally starts to see things. Barry's head changes into Narks, then Roy's, two of the individuals that he killed when he lost control of his powers. This can't be real, can it? His mind, his guilt, it's all playing tricks on him. Is this the downside to being unmoored from reality? As Wally snaps out of it, the Flash grabs him by the throat yelling, it's over! But before the Flash could snap Wally's neck, there's a thunk, followed by several more thunks. Arrows begin to shoot into the Flash's neck. And as the Flash slowly begins to release his grip from Wally, he tells Wally, Thank you! And as Wally says, you're welcome, the Flash's body explodes into dust and a voice asks, Where did you come from? Wally looks back to see the arsenal of this world, telling him, It's a long story, Roy. Thanks for the help, but uh, what's with all the vampires here? Arsenal asks him, What are you talking about? It's been this way as long as I can remember. Arsenal then aims his crossbow at Wally, asking, And how did you know my name? Wally tells him, I'm from a different universe? And Arsenal tells him, right. Well, I only hunt the undead. Since there's no more undead, later. As Arsenal jumps down into the alleyway, Wally follows him, telling him, maybe I can help you? Arsenal gets in his car, asking, is that right? Well, the Justice League of the Undead are feeling particularly sassy tonight. Maybe it has to do with why you're here. Might as well take the fight to Batman himself. Once ready, Wally hops in and asks, how did all of the heroes in your world turn into vampires? Could it be because of some mysterious black ooze? An arsenal tells him that it's more depressing than that. Batman used to be the best of the best, until he decided to become a vampire in order to take down Dracula. Once Batman became a vampire, well, you can guess what happened next. Wally nods, telling him that that sounds uncomfortably like the Batman of his world. And soon, the two sneak into the Batcave to find it covered in darkness, leaking out of the dark world that won't die. Arsenal asks if he's supposed to be scared of black lava lamps, and Wally says that the energy can destroy entire worlds, devouring them in minutes. That's what Wally is here to stop. So Arsenal asks, Are you saying that these lava lamp things aren't going to pop at the business end of my arrows? Wally takes out the cosmic staff, and just as he gets ready to release its energy, a battering flies by, knocking it out of his hand. Vampire Batman lunges out of the ceiling, shouting, I've analyzed this material, and I could use it to sustain an entire world of vampires. No longer will we need to depend on human cattle for sustenance. Arsenal covers Wally, yelling for him to grab the magic stick. But as Wally gets his hands on it, Batman swipes and rips into Arsenal's chest. Wally calls out to Roy as he runs towards Batman. A few seconds later, Batman screams in pain, and Wally vibrates into his heart using his own nuclear reactor. Kids, this is why you never play with nuclear reactors. That should keep him trapped long enough to figure out how to cure you of your vampirism, Batman. But once they've got Batman secure, Wally runs back to Arsenal telling him to hang on, but Arsenal asks if he's new to this or something. Every time they put on the mask, every time can be their last. Wally says, no, I failed you again, Roy. Arsenal grabs Wally's hand, telling him, No, 
You didn't take away my choice. Live, die, did it all. With my eyes open, Wally West. His arsenal takes his last breath. Wally holds him crying over his friend all over again, and Tempest watches from the cosmos telling himself that over the years, he has done so many unsavory deeds in the name of the Fuguenots. Never has he had to reignite the flame within a hero like this. The next incursion point, Wally finds himself in the middle of Earth-13 and Earth-32. The darkness of these worlds is trying to force the worlds to come together, causing each planet's heroes to fight each other, thinking the other one is the threat. But while the two factions are going at it, Wally finds himself at the mercy of the super demon Etrigan. Etrigan squeezes down, but as he feels his grip slipping, he says, yeah, For my grip, you are vibrating. Wally falls out, telling him that he would love to stick around and hear what he could possibly rhyme that with, but he's got to run. As Wally begins to head to where he dropped the cosmic staff, as he grabs it, a white light speeds by, snatching it from him. Wally looks up to see his wife, Linda, twirling the staff, telling him that he's too slow. No one is faster than light speed. Ignoring everything else, Wally jumps up, grabbing her, shouting, Linda! And Linda asks, who are you? Wally shouts, it's me, the Flash, your husband. She vibrates through him, telling him, well, that's just creepy. I don't know who you think I am, but I'm not that person. However, given how today is all sorts of crazy, I won't hold that against you. But she does have a few questions to ask, and if she doesn't like the answers, she'll snap the stupid stick in half. Wally jumps up, taking Linda by the hand, telling her that he can't let her do that. Just run with him into the Speed Force for a bit, and it'll all make sense. So after a few moments, Linda says that she doesn't know who he is, but something tells her that he's not going to screw her over. Together, the two of them make their stops to push the darkness back, so much so that the darkness actually releases its grip on the two planets. Finally, the two stop running and Linda shouts, Phew! Never pushed the limits of speed like that before. It was like something was controlling the speed force, and when we were there, I got to see bits of your life and your world. I may never be that Linda, but you know so much about our powers. Maybe when this is over, we could. While he smiles, telling her that he's sorry. In all of the multiverse, there's only one woman that he loves. Linda kisses him before he goes, telling him good luck. And as he takes off to head to the next incursion point, he crosses over into the next world and he sees that it isn't an Earth at all. It's the first incursion. The statues of fallen heroes all stare at Wally and Wally shouts asking, What is this? Why am I here? Why am I getting the feeling that I was the only person who could pull this off? A voice from behind says, Daddy? And after hearing the familiar voice, Wally races over as he takes his mask off, hugging giant Iris. Iris says, Daddy, you have to do something for us. And Wally tells her, Of course, princess, anything, anything to have you back. And Iris points off into the distance, yelling, Run! As Iris points off in the distance, yelling run, Wally looks up at a giant wave of darkness running towards them, stating, I'll never leave, not without you. Iris shouts that he doesn't understand. They have tried to leave so many times before, but every time, that wave of darkness stops them. Wally tells her, Daddy's here now. And that makes all the difference in the... The wave crashes down and the three begin to try and get ahead of it, but hands are reaching out, grabbing Iris and Jai, pulling them back. Wally stops to help his kids, but the more that he struggles to free them, the stronger the pull from the darkness becomes, with Iris yelling that it's c c cold But Iris and Jai's voices are drowned out by the darkness as it slams into Wally. He closes his eyes to remember the life that he once had, and as the darkness spits him back out, he screams, TEMPEST! No more mysteries! No more half answers! What is this thing? I was convinced I was doing good, but now this is affecting my family. Why did you bring me here to this world just to lose my kids again? Tempest appears before him, telling him, You misunderstand. You've made it this far because you were finally able to understand the truth about why this planet must be destroyed. Why out of a billion trillion life forms, you alone are... But before Tempest could finish, Wally speeds up around him, punching and yelling, That is enough! Are you out of your celestial mind? Those are my kids! As the cosmic staff shines in the distance, Wally runs over to it to try and push back the darkness out of this world. But as he uses it, the darkness continues to spread. This can't be it. This has to work. I just have to push a little bit harder! He begins to run faster than he's ever moved before, faster than light and thought running around the globe to purge the darkness of the light. He could do this. 
He is Wally West, the fastest father in the multiverse. And as the light begins to cover the planet, something stops Wally. He trips and he falls, asking what force was able to stop him. And that's when he sees it. The Mobius Chair. The Chair of Infinite Knowledge. And it's empty. The chair is supposed to know the answer to everything, right? Right? So give me the answers that Tempest won't. Why am I here? Why me? Wally reaches out to the chair, and just as his fingers touch it, he sees it. There are no words, but he can feel the answers. He can taste them on the tip of his soul. Instances before the flashpoint, the event that changed everything, were gone. They were pulled from his hands from reality. At the same time, he was thrown into the Speed Force, where he ran forever. He was always going to be trapped until... Until... Until he was no longer a part of one thing, and in that instant, he became unmoored. He is one with nothing and everything all at once. He's not a part of this timeline, but he's a part of every timeline. Everything at the same time. Wally pulls his hand back, and Tempest tells him that it is more than even he can decipher at once. Be grateful that it did not require him to sit this time. Wally says that it makes no sense. He could have changed this much and not remember it. And Tempest goes on telling him that the information has always been in his head. He simply rejected it. His family was taken from him. His comrades died because of him. He was broken. Wally shouts, asking, then what is the point of all of this? Some cosmic quest to put me back together? And Tempest yells, you know why. You figured it out. Wally screams, You want me to do your dirty work? You want me to kill this world? And Tempest tells him, It's more than that. It can only be destroyed by you because you are the one that created it. As soon as Tempest says that, Wally knows it to be true. He can feel it in his art. This dark world was created by Wally's greatest fear. Losing his kids. Losing Jai and Iris. This is all his fault and he can see that now. Wally falls to his knees yelling that the price he's asking. There's no way. Not now. Not ever. Some time passes and Wally takes time to appreciate the smaller things in life. When he isn't racing around saving reality from being devoured by dark matter, fighting alongside President Superman or watching a vampiric Barry Allen turn to dust, he's sitting back enjoying lunch with his kids. There have been so many alternate versions of the people that he loved and cared about, but this, right here, right now, Iris and Jai are real. His light, his life. He can feel it in his soul, he can feel it in his heart. And at long last, he is no longer the fastest man alive. Wally West is the happiest father alive. Iris says that she's sorry about dinner, but they've had to scavenge for food since they got here. And don't judge, but she never thought she'd miss broccoli. Wally wipes the sauce from the side of his mouth, telling her that he would never. And Wally just spends time with his children. And the Mobius chair, it waits along with the dying Tempest Fuguenot. Tempest has seen the entire universe rise from a speck of dust. He thought he'd seen it all, but he was wrong. Nothing could have prepared him for the end of everything. No one would have thought that it would only take one dark world refusing to die to create such an apocalyptic maelstrom. Over time, these worlds wither and die. Every dark world, except this one. He enlisted Wally West, the singularity in all of the multiverse prevent this one world from bringing about the destruction of every other. Because it was Wally West who had inadvertently created this world from his own darkest fears. That he would never see his children again. But if he could not bear the weight of what he must do, then reality itself must pay. So as Wally puts his kids to bed, he gives them a kiss on the forehead, telling himself, No, not yet. Tempest tells him that the time has come. If he doesn't find a way to make things right, now, Wally stops him. I know. The multiverse will be consumed by dark matter. Tempest goes on telling him, The Mobius chair will overwhelm all of your senses, both heart and mind, with pure knowledge. Any capacity for emotion, passion, love, human connection will elude you forever. Every part of your mind will be filled with all information that the Mobius chair has acquired until now, with infinitely more to come. There will be no secrets to you. Wally looks at the chair, thinking out loud that there won't be any room in his head for anything else. No thoughts of Linda, his wife, his children, Iris and Jai. Not even room for himself in his own mind. Tempest tells him, That is correct. Sit in the chair. This world will fall. The multiverse will heal itself. Wally then says that before he does this, he must promise him one thing. When this planet falls, Tempest, Iris and Jai will be free. 
They need to go back home. Tempest tells him, it will be done. Wally holds out Tempest's staff, telling him, thank you for giving me the strength to remember the man that I was before. Well, before. For giving me the power to save those different worlds on my way here. And thank you for one last perfect day with my kids. Tempest tells him, that was all you. The staff had no power at all, ever. All it did was channel the hope of a good man. The hope that will always be in your heart. Wally puts on his mask as he gets ready to sit. And Irish and Jai wake up calling out for their father. As the two run out of the tent, a giant hand from Tempest Fugonaut stops them. Wally takes a hard look at the chair. And as he sits down, he looks back at his kids, telling them, I'll always love you. And, but before he could finish that statement, everything fades as the knowledge of everything flows into Wally West. The dark world begins to crumble, and Iris yells that they have to save her father. And Tempest tells her that he is afraid that your father is saving you. Without his sacrifice, countless realities would be devoured by the dark matter. Your father stopped that from happening. With his dark world obliterated, countless other aberrations fall in its wake. As Wally's dark world implodes, the skies fill with dozens of worlds and galaxies, all booming with light and life from his sacrifice. Jai asks, did daddy do that? And Iris says, he did what he always does, the right thing. Iris then asks what happens next, and Tempest tells her that he's going to keep a promise. And over in Central City, Linda hears a loud foosh and runs to the window to see what's happening, and that's when she realizes what's outside, and she begins to cry. She rushes out to hug her children, and somewhere, somewhere, a father watches. They are Wally West. No, they were Wally West. Wally West and something more. We are the Mobius Chair, a single, perfect vessel of infinite knowledge. We see the beings who have sat in this chair throughout history. We see Batman, Owlman, Metron. We see Metron destroyed, obliterated by a man, by Dr. Manhattan. The same man who touched the chair and shared his power with this chair. Dr. Manhattan is creation. He is doomsday. He is the clock ticking on the multiverse. We share his vision. Speeding across time and space, it is impossibly alien, yet so familiar. We have been here before, even though we have not. Every thought ever races through our mind, and then another mind reaches across the void. Kindred spirits, and in an instant, we are more than Wally, more than the Mobius Chair, more than anyone who has ever been. Since the creation of the Mobius Chair, it has been content to observe. But today is a new day, a new vocation. A new me. And there you have it, the Flash Forward series. Now, we're probably going to do a Wally West rebirth, like full story, uh, six months to a year down the road, where we kind of combine his rebirth appearance with Heroes in Crisis, with this storyline. But now he's Dr. Manhattan, and that is the storyline that is coming out. Well, it was supposed to come out in May, but with everything happening with COVID-19, it's gotten pushed back. So we don't really know what's going on with that. So once the full Wally West rebirth storyline is told, we'll be able to tell you that in a full story. And I'll see you guys next time, right here.